Welcome to the new episode of All That Jazz. I'm your host, Matias, and I have with me Julie Stubbe. I got that Julia. right. Julia. Julia. Oh, my god! I think you got the last name right, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> and you say Matias? Matias, yeah. Matias. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so good. I got Julia that. See, I got that. I, I'm not even going to try for your last name. I'm just going to go with that, the first name. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, so um, I think uh, we found each other on Facebook and I found a lot of um, my guests on Facebook and you have a interesting spiritual background, I understand. So a lot of my guests, when I speak to them, they, they start, the spiritual journey starts like really, really young. Is that how it started with you? Well, as a child, I was clairaudient and I had gifts and I, it's like, I still remember like at like five, four or five years old going out in the middle of the yard and just screaming up at the sky, why did you leave me here? So I was like, I was really aware of the differences of things as far as that goes. So my intuitive gifts were always awoken. And it's like, you have your spiritual journey, but I call it the journey to wholeness. And where my journey to wholeness started, because I grew up in a a dysfunctional family. My mother was a psychotic alcoholic. There was a lot of physical and emotional abuse. Mm. There was also some other um, some other things that needed to be healed within my in, within me. And we don't always know what's out there. We don't know. We only know what we know. So we repeat these patterns. We get attracted yeah. to that physical violence or that abuse because that's all we know. And that, and it's so it's a matter of reprogramming and finding that wholeness within us so in my 20s i um ended up going to what i call talk therapy i went to a psychologist and that was like the first steps as far as being able to realize that i was a person and it was okay for me to want things for myself and i wasn't mm. selfish just because i wanted to take care of myself right so it was helpful and for you it was helpful so it was a start but it wasn't it, it really didn't dissipate the anger or the, the pain mm. or everything that was inside me. Yeah. So in my 30s, I was going to a massage therapist for, um, I had been in a car accident in March of 1980. And so we were working with my neck because I had, I had a lot of pain and I had dissipation in my hands and such so it's like it was really required for me to just to be able to survive because the headaches would last like four to five days and so with that it gave me some relief well she had to get her both her hips replaced so she sent me to another massage therapist and her name was Ann Bacone and she's out of Reading Pennsylvania but she was also a shamanic um I guess healer or practitioner whatever however you want to claim it oh wow and so she was working with me on the physical level with my massage, but then she touched my heart chakra. And literally the pain went straight through my back and down to my tailbone. And I just knew I was in the right place, that this was the beginning of my journey to wholeness and healing. So is it a spiritual journey? It's like, I don't, you know, that's a label. And we might you know, look at that as far as limiting what it is. I really believe that we become whole as far as with our healing and we and our, our our spiritual journey is to look within ourselves so that we can become whole right and so i went with her and worked with her and i had an episode where i was actually did we did childhood regression so we went back and i was i was talking i was literally talking baby talk and i was like i was like my body hurt all over and tears were coming out of my eyes and I, I was like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden my head hurt and it's like, I couldn't breathe. Yep. And when I came out of that, when we came out of that regression, I literally had, I had, she had, I was throwing up water. The water was whole, being held in my lungs. So I filled like three handfuls of paper towels with the water that came out of my lungs because wow. that's what I was holding in. So, so you actually had water inside. All yes, your body, my body had the memory of it and was holding that within me. Wow. And here, what, what had happened, because when I came out of it, I remembered what happened is my mom was giving me a bath. You know, I was like 18 months old. She was giving me a bath. The water was too hot. 
So I began to cry. And she didn't want my dad to hear because he was also violent. So she pushed me underneath the water to keep me from being heard. And I hit my head under the tub and then I couldn't breathe as far as that goes. And that's where all that came from, that trauma came from. Mm. And my understanding of it is that was like the first time that I really left my body. Uh, and I actually, you know, there is a, you know, what we call walk-ins. And so I had a walk-in come in to keep my physical body intact for the period of a long period of my childhood because there was a lot of violence. Oh, wow. And we shared, and we shared, we shared this body because it's like I had in a previous incarnation, I had checked out in my toddlerhood and it was right before I came into this lifetime. And mm. it was really important for me to have my body and have my soul, my current soul be intact in this body to do the work I need to do. So, so there's somebody of, on the other side that's a stand in that's like for people that can be in the body. It's like, I'll, I'll volunteer and come into it during traumatic. Yeah. Time. It's, it's kind of like that. And there's different ones. Sometimes they take the body over completely where mm. the whole, the soul just completely checks out. Wow. There's different ways to look at it because I've had several different walk-ins because I've also made agreements to allow walk-ins to share my body, to experience on earth, kind of like a, um, an amusement park ride. <laughs> it's like, right. So do you want to, you want to check out earth for a while here? I'll, and also I would share it that that was when I was old, older and just, I guess within the last two years is when that I've had enough of the, my visitors and I've released all the contracts between them and the agreements that I made with them. So I have no longer have any walk-ins within me. So it's just my spirit. It's just my soul that occupies this current body. Yeah, that seems better in a way. Well, it's just you. <laughs> well, the know. body's just the vessel. The mm. body's just the vessel. If you look at it like that, it's like you're just here and the soul just needs a place to be. And my soul just needed to be here. So it's like if you're a vessel is a car, so you could have a couple people in a car, you know, it could be a little crazy depending on what you're doing. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's also multiple personality disorder, isn't it? Like yeah, switching. it could be considered that. Yeah, I I, I thought sometimes I was crazy because my mom was a psychotic alcoholic, and it's like because I'm clairaudient and I hear, I hear, and I can also hear people's thoughts. So it's like, wow, what's that all about? Wow, you know. So, and um, so I could yeah. always tell when somebody was lying, and wasn't really being truthful or keeping information. And as a child, to know that, and then you know, to see the deception at that level is really quite interesting. And it really had me evolve in a different way, mm. but it was all part of who I am, you know, and how I got here. Is it possible, like when you, uh, clear audience, uh, ability that you, uh, watch TV and you can like a politician speaks and you're like, oh yeah, he, he doesn't mean what he's saying. <laughs> well, or is that different? Because you I have think to be there's a difference. There's a difference in that. It's like I can, when I see that, it's like I, um, I check in with myself. Is that true or false? So it's a, does it feel light or heavy to me? Mm. So that's how I check. Like like with, if we're going to talk about like politicians or or as things you know outside my immediate field, um, like if I read an article about something, I'm like is that true or false? It's like, so does it feel light or does it feel real? Does it feel heavy? And I just trust my own intuition and my own discernment. And everybody has their own level of what they need to trust. And there are people that might see what they see is true that I don't see is true. It doesn't mean that, you know, either of us is wrong. It's just our perception of it and the way we're programmed and our beliefs. Right. Right. So you, you, so you're not a subscriber that there is something, um, how do I put it? That there's some, uh, um, ideologies that are better than others. You're like, no, well, I, I, I believe I, it's like, I mean, I believe religion is man-made and it's created, but some people need that religion to get to a certain point where they can find themselves within themselves. So everything has its place. So it's about not being, not judging others for where they are or their beliefs. It's about honoring and respecting because we're all here. We're all connected. Some of us see things differently than others, 
but when you allow hate or fear to block that connection between each other, that's when there's the issue. Whereas mm. if you can be in that place of love, which I really resonate with, it's like, I love, you know, I love people for who they are. For, their actions may be completely different. Do I necessarily always interact if like they, if their energies are heavy and it, it's fearful, do I interact? I can choose not to interact, but that doesn't right. mean I can't hold space for them. And holding space is just holding space that they will find their way and find their way to wholeness. Do you, do you think something um, with your background, um, I had a bit of that as well, but maybe not to your level of uh, some violence in your childhood that, that translates to then being an adult and wanting to um, uh, not be in confrontations. Because I still find myself, if I'm, um, God knows I've been in many political debates and I, invariably some people get upset. <laughs> so. Um, and it's the, you know, emotionality and stuff like that is really hard for me to deal with. And, um, uh, so yeah, how did you find that? Do you think that's the reason that you don't take a strong position or do you think it's just not wise to take a strong position anyway? Well, it's not that I don't have beliefs. I believe what is, what is my truth, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I have to, um, put, push my truth onto others. Right. Okay. So I have strong beliefs and I have, you know, but my, it's because somebody, um, I posted something on Facebook and somebody, and it was just, it was just, um, I think it was from C.S. Lewis and it was just a, oh yeah, an excerpt from that. And they wanted to know what I interpreted it as. And I said, I said, basically, it's like they were looking for an argument is what they were looking for. Yeah, and tell. what I came down to saying is it's really irrelevant what my interpretation of it is. I put it out there to allow people to get the opportunity to be able to think about it and see if it it triggers anything within them and to look at themselves within themselves. So my opinion of it is irrelevant because I'm not here to push my agenda. I'm here to give opportunity for others to really look within inside themselves and see what resonates and see where their truth is. And if, if it means dissolving a program or a belief that they've been programmed through the media or through birth or whatever it is, that's keeping them from being whole, then that's what it is. And I only put stuff out there when spirit guides me because, yeah. and I have, I have discussions. I said, you know, if I put this out there, it's going to cause da, 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 da. And they're there, yep, we know. And it's like, okay, so can I turn off the notifications <laughs> so I don't have to, to right. be a part of it? And sometimes I'm allowed to, and other times it's like, I do. And it's like when, because I had somebody who replied to something else and it was about, and I won't even, I'm not going to get into it, but it, it was a difference of opinion and it was on somebody else's, somebody else's post. And I just put a link to some other information and they just like went off on me and it was just information and it was, it was valid information, but it wasn't something they wanted to see. And, and then I just let it go. And I put below it, I said, you know, I respect, I honor, um, I, I think it was either respect or honor your truth. And I ask that you honor, respect my truth. And they came back with, it's not my truth. It is the truth. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you really still want to fight. And I was like, put two little hearts <laughs> and, and replied that way. And all I heard, because I was connected to them on a personal level, and I heard WTF loud and clear, like, what is this? This is not what I was looking for. I was looking for to be able to be, you know, to have an argument, to have a fight. And, and I'm not, she's not giving it to me. So I will, I don't, I just don't want to have that. I'm not yeah. looking for that. I don't have to prove I'm right. I don't have to prove my truth is, is, is your truth. It's like, or vice versa. Yeah. It's not who I am. That's, um, uh, there's an Eric Byrne quote, uh, from transactional analysis. He wrote a book called games people play. Uh, and the only way to stop a game is to stop it. <laughs> Basically. Right. Yeah. Cause we're all in the game. Yeah. I, you know, it's like I had, um, when I was up in Pennsylvania, because I'm in Florida now, I ha had these neighbors across the street and they, my, my, my immediate neighbors actually moved because of them. And I was like, and we had an agreement that 
um, the kids, because they weren't supposed to, it was illegal to actually play the basketball on the street. Right. But I talked to the kids because my son was five at the time. And I said, could you just stop like by, you know, 8, 30, 9 o'clock so my son can go to sleep? And they agreed with me. They said, and that was the agreement. Then, then the one day it was after that time. And I said, you know, it's like, I asked us, you know, I said, you know, you know, we talked about this and, and they stopped. And then all of a sudden they started again. And I said, and they said, well, my parents said, I don't have to. And I'm like, okay. And the father came out and he literally was in my face because somebody had called the police on him and da, 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 da. And I wasn't the one. And I was like, I actually had fear because it's like he was in my driveway and he was in my face. And I was like, okay, whatever. And Why? so the because next- there were kids on the driveway playing basketball and then somebody called the police? Because it was illegal and it, and it was a small community and it, they were doing it late at night and the balls were bouncing. So it was, you know, oh. but anyway, it's like, I was trying to make a compromise with them because kids want to play. It's like, they need a place to play. So I'm not telling you not to play. I'm just asking you, can you just, like can we have boundaries with it that's all because i thought it was a you know to me it really i didn't really care it's like i was great that they were doing playing the basketball but the ordinance of the of the actual community was that you couldn't do that you couldn't have the basketball net on the street da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. so you know i stepped back from it i went inside and i was shaken and i re, you know i recovered and i would go for my walks you know and but the next day the father the father got out like five or six basketballs and called all these kids in the neighborhood and had them bouncing the basketballs on the street in front of my house till like midnight. I was like, okay, well, this is fun. <laughs> it's just like, just this because. is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, just because. And so, so I had to go for my walk and I came face to face with him and I had a smile on him and I just said, how are you doing? And I didn't even bring it up. And it was like, I'm not going to come into and play your game. I'm not going to have that, the anger or whatever it is you're yeah, holding. Yeah. That's not mine. If you want, if that's the way you have to deal with it, with your anger or your fear, whatever it is, that's yours. I'm not going to claim it. So I'm not going to be part of it. Yeah. I've had a lot of uh, triggering stuff happen lately, but that's, you know, that's, that's my stuff. Like I want to go back to, um, Okay, because we didn't finish your backstory, so you want, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, well, I got si I get sidetracked really no, easily, it's, it's, so it's keep my, me in line. <laughs> it's my diversion, so basically. Um, so you went to the therapist, and uh, by the way, was the old therapist really old because uh, hip replacement? No, she was. She was actually younger than me. She was in her thirties. Then she did yeah. a lot of sports for probably maybe. Oh, I, I don't, she was actually, um, I actually found out later after I met her, because I met her through, um, I went for a spa day and she was a massage therapist at the spa. And then it's like, she took private clients and it's like, so I hooked up with her and I realized that she was um, on my girls track team when I was a, a, on track in high school. And I'm like, Oh, oh. that's where you're from. So okay. Athlete. yeah. So, okay. and then the, and then, so then she sent me to the other, um, the shamanic, you know, massage therapist and, and, and it's like, it was like, I would, I just decided I made a commitment that I was going to do the work and I was going to heal. So through that process, I ended up forgiving my mother, um, and releasing that. And that was like, that took me two, two and a half years. To what kind of work, for, what kind of work were you the, doing? The shamanic work where you work with your inner child. Oh. Um, it's, it's, you know, you work with your beliefs, you really look at what your triggers are. So it was like, so we would do that work. It's like, sometimes we would go back in the regression, but it was like the, I would like, okay, so I would have to do the work about myself so that I could forgive my mom, you know? So, and that was really important. So it's like, so like, you know, when you, when you throw up water out of your lungs after a thing, and then there's other things where I actually almost vomited, it's like, you would go and it's like, Ooh, wonder what's going to happen this time. And it's like, it would be a little scary on a, on a physical level, but my body, your body remembers everything. Your mind blocks stuff out because it's so painful, but your body holds on to all this. So it holds on the blockages. So that's what causes dis-ease and in turn can cause illnesses because I had a lot of physical issues, you know, besides right. holding all that, that so anger and yeah. Anxiety. So it's all the suppressed and uh, repressed emotions that would be holding in the body. Yeah. And that, and so it's about releasing that, integrating that honoring it 
and letting it go so that your body can really function the way it's supposed to function. Yeah. Yeah. So um, where did you go from there? So you went, um, you worked on well, this for two years. Well, I've worked, well, the, the forgive me, I've worked, I've been working on myself since then. I still continually work on myself because I still get triggers that show up once in a while. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I just deal with it because it's like, wow, what's, I thought, you know, it's like people say, well, I thought I dealt with that. And it's like, it's like <laughs> an onion. Yeah. It's like an onion and it's a layer. So it's like, you'll get there. And um, then as you go deeper in the onion, you can go to deeper levels of that, of that pain that you've been holding. Like right. I was actually working this week because I had um, the night before last, it actually was, it's like, I just couldn't stop crying. I was like, whoa, what is this all about? It's like in the tears and, and I had some weird sensation with my feet and my back. I was getting like, it felt like somebody was stabbing me in the back and I was oh, up yeah. all night. I was like, it was like, wow, what's this? And sometimes I can't see it because I'm in it. So I have a couple other workers that I work with and it's like, can we look at this? And it came down to the root chakra and it came down that we have this, it, there was like this energetic implant, which you created for protection that was still there, that was all over the place. And it was keeping me, and it brought up the memories of the violence that was between, you know, my mother and my stepfather. And it, the I fact that I used to hide, I used to hide like in the bottom of, I don't know if you remember those metal cabinet closets that are really big. Mm -hmm. I would literally hide in there, put clothes over top of me so they couldn't find me. So I couldn't get hurt. Wow. You know, and so all these memories came up again as far as, whoa, so there still was stuff that it's like I had to look at and really process and really clear out of my energy field. So it's like, I was, you know, worked with my friend that, you know, we run energy together and we worked on it through it together for like an hour so that I could get to that next level to let it go. And it's like, and it really, it really helped as far as my emotions, like, okay, I get it. That's what it is. I can let that go. But that doesn't mean something won't show up next week right right and the question is do i just ignore it stuff it or do i just say oh another opportunity to become even more whole right but sometimes when new things come up uh, as a as somebody that's into spiritual work you know, even still i'm i'm like oh no another disaster <laughs> <laughs> I, even yeah, had, but it's <coughs> I even had the thing with my back um there was um a few days ago i woke up really suddenly because of something and then i thought everything was fine and then like half an hour later my back was in spasm or something i was like i never felt like like i pulled something in my back and i was like off for about two or three days it was crazy yeah i've had where my back does weird things too sometimes and it's just it's like that trauma that physical trauma so where is it coming from mm. you know and it's like you have to look at it and it's like i have you know you said you don't like confrontation it's like i was doing um breath work so breath work is where you really breathe in and you let like your anger out and I wasn't I was afraid of my anger I was literally afraid of my anger because it's like wow you hold all that in what does that look like and it's like not only was it was like was I reflecting because I saw it, the violence you know as a child was that what I was the fear of that coming out of me was what what I was holding not that I had all that anger in me but the fear of what I saw and my parents, hmm. that that was a part of me, you know, so it's like to, and I've, and it's like, and I do remember like in my twenties, you know, in my teen years that when I would finally like blow, you know, anger, it was like, you didn't want to be around me. It was a scary thing because it's like, I would just take and take and see now I don't, that's not who I am. I'm pretty level because I deal with things as they come. And I look at it, it's like, oh, this is a trigger. That means there's something inside of me that needs to heal. So instead of pointing the finger out to somebody else, I'm looking within. Yeah, in a way, it's a blessing that it comes up so it can be healed. But oftentimes, mm -hmm. it's painful and we don't see it as a blessing at a time it happens. Um, yeah, well, I do now. It's not that I always did. It was like, ah, right, what the right. heck is this? Yeah, it's, but, but yeah. I do now. To me, it's like I had um, a neighbor. She's passed since then. Uh, her husband had going gone to the hospital and so she was left alone and she had alcohol problems and she also had some other so they they do wellness checks here so they her husband would have a wellness check and so the police would come knock on the door 
make sure everybody she's okay but we have like a b c d so we had you know so there's four units and they didn't have the a b c d so they would come to my door and they said do you know who this is and i would go yeah next door and that happened like maybe five or six times and it was no big deal and then it was like i didn't hear anything for like a month and it was like 10 30 at night and the doorbell rang I'm like what's this and here it's her and a taxi driver and the taxi is in my my driveway and i'm like can I help you? And she's drunk. She was totally, the alcohol was there. Oh man. And I'm like, well, actually I go, so can I help you? Because well, I live here. And I'm like, well, actually you live next door. And the taxi driver said, okay. And he took her. And it's like, when I closed the door, I could feel the irritation, the anger, because I saw my mother and what I grew up in. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa. So it was like, thank you universe for sending her to my door. Now I got to look within to see what this is all about because I am irritated and I don't, that's, that's something I need to heal. But the universe said that to me because it's like it knew I was, I was ready for another layer of clearing or healing. Yeah. Yeah. I think you always, the things you're exposed to as a kid, I think you're always um, a mixture of the baggage of your mother and your father in some way or another. Yeah. The beliefs are there. It's like the beliefs, even, um, I, I was teaching a, my group last night and I did a, it's about, was about financial money. And so that imprint of like, when we're three and four years old, we hear our parents arguing like, oh, there's never enough. Oh, you think money grows on trees. It's like, oh, you just piss it away. And we absorb that at that age. And that becomes part of our belief system. Mm. So it's like, so when I work with work with my clients and with my group that I'm working with. It's like, we went back and I wanted everybody to see their three and their four-year-old. And then we cleared that belief at that point, as well as the, all the points between there and their, their current age of those beliefs. And we just went through that clearing process because the root of it was, was when they were three and four years old, that's where mm -hmm. it all got started. So we, we don't even realize these programs just by little sentences or little words that we hear that are created within us that compromise us from being fully whole and fully abundant, you know, and, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of other um, stuff were you, so you went into, you were into shamanic stuff and then. Well, I was just, I just went to her. I was, so how I, so how I started with my business, I guess you would say yeah. is I was, my day job is like, I was um, actually a database programmer and I worked with, you know, programming and da, 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 da. But when you do emotional energy work, you want to clear your fields afterwards. So it's like the best way to do it is that through salt scrubs, you know, clearing mm. your body with sea salt. So I didn't like any that I found so i was guided and i started making my own so i made it you know I, I that's how wellness treasures was my my dba company and so i would make salt scrubs and bath salts and body oils and then i made anti-aging facial creams and i went through that was the whole process how did you make I, how did you make that like uh, how did how did you find the, uh, the salt that was like oh this is good this is good stuff i just well i would i just did research on the different oils like the like i combined I, the oils I use, I use avocado oil. I use um, on olive oil. Mm. I use grapeseed oil, apricot oil, almond oil. And I would take combinations of those. So it's like, and then the sea salts I use, I was guided, I had a dead sea salt, um, regular sea salt. And I use some Epsom salt to combine to create stuff. And then I used essential oils. So it was just like the alchemist. It's like, I just created and it's like, oh, this feels good. I like this. So it's like, I started with that, you know, to, and that's where I was guided. Cause it's like, oh, well, this will help other people, da, 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 da. And then I finally like took a Reiki class. And mm. from there, it's like, I was still doing the, 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 that, but it's like, I wasn't really practicing. I was just working on myself. And then I, the class that um, changed where it's like, I started working on others was I was guided to go to Omega Institute up in New York and they have all these different classes that you can take. And I found one um, that said working with angels and it's like, huh, oh, that sounds like something I would wanna do. And it was IET, Integrated Energy Therapy with Stephen Thayer. And it was the basic intermediate and advanced. And I took it and it resonated. Um, and that became like my modality of structure, I call it. 
and I, I was like working with it and everything. And so there, then I started adding that to assist other people. And when I know I did my first trade show and I was offering services and I was working on people, I had another intuitive psychic that came up afterwards. He goes, so you're the, you're the one that's making, you're the psychic that's making everybody cry. And I'm like, first of all, I don't like the label psychic and I'm sorry if I'm making <laughs> them cry. But, um, but it was just, that's the way I started touching people's lives. And from there, it's like, so eventually the, so he just picked up so he just Mm -hmm. picked up on something without you saying anything so he just knew or was he other people were apparently telling him about me because i was working on other clients right and they would you know we had these releases as far as that goes and it's like you know and because even then i was clairaudient like and i was still very intuitive and i was a high level empath it's like i you know i got out of my own way and I could hear the messages, you know, and so I would give the messages or I would, and I would feel the energy. So I knew where the blocks were, you know, to have that release. So eventually the, the salt scrubs and everything went away. Cause that was like laborious. It was a lot of work. They had a shelf life, da, 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 da. And so I integrated some other product in that I didn't have to make. And it was light. And I started working, you know, I would take different modalities like matrix energetics and and wherever I was guided that like made me lift up and made me feel good. And it's like, you know, that was light. And I just started integrating those with my practice. And so I was doing it part-time. There was, I was, you know, I was doing it part-time and I was, had my day job. And then eight years ago, eight, almost nine years ago, spirit, oh, the, the joke was the way I had with my guys is like that I was like Batman. So it's like during the week I was, Bruce Wayne and I did my computer job, da 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 da. Oh yeah. And then on the weekends I was Batman and I put my Batman tights on and I was a superhero, or whatever. Yeah. And so spirit came to me in my dream and in my meditation and said, "Okay, it's time to wear your Batman tights all the time. You're going to sell your house, quit your job, and move." It's <laughs> <was> like really? <laughs> wow. Is that what I'm going to do? So, and I'm like, and I listened to spirit. I've, I at that point, you know, eight years ago, nine years ago, it's like I was. I was on board, whatever spirit has me doing, I'm game. How, how does that look like when you say, I listen to spirit, how does that, um, how does that guidance from the spirit come about? I hear it, I, it comes through, it comes through, it's that clear audience, it comes through that, that visual. Like a different head. voice? Like a, It's or, a different voice, okay. yeah. Got it. And I used to have the three rule. Um, before that, I would have the three rule that things had to show up three times for me to even consider oh, yeah. it. Oh, that's, but, that's solid. Yeah. And it's so, the, and that, so I did that for years and then, and then eventually I just like trust because when I know, I know, and when I know it's not, then I know it's not. And I right. just trust it. And if I, if I'm on the fence, it's like, then I go through and I'll, I'll ask for more different confirmation. And I work with only, you know, one of the rules is I work anything that channels through me has to be a vibration of divine love or higher. It has to be a benevolent being. So I use discernment because there's a lot of tricksters out there that say they're of, you know, of this high vibration, but they're truly not. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so you have to, you have to look at that. So you have, you know, so at this point, at that point in my life, it's like, I had, I had my boundaries. It's like, I had a whole lot of things and I was ready. And I was like, oh, so I'm, I'm ready. Where do I go? Well, we don't care where you go. We just need you to go. And what it came down to is that the ley lines in Pennsylvania, the energy, and because I'm so high level empath, the fear and the the energy that comes through the ley lines was just coming up through the floorboards. And it was affecting me physically. At that point, I had I had ulcerative colitis. I had um, some other physical ailments that were, and I just, you know, I was sick all the time. And it was just because the energy of the planet was coming up and I was just taking it on. So, so it's uh, actually, are, are those the energies that you can be measured by, uh, by an instrument? Like, Oh, stuff? I don't know. They probably oh. can be, but it's not something I, you know, it's like, okay. I just can feel the energy. So it's like, cause I have my, a cousin. my body. Ta- uh, hmm? This is very interesting. Cause I have a cousin that, you know, uh, you know, just normal Catholic doesn't believe in anything, but he said, uh, in his house, he built a new house, but that he was getting sick. And then he was like, 
and somebody at work suggested that they, he do some measurement of this guy that comes in and does some kind of measurement with that device. And then he draws up um, this chart where the energy is coming through the house. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and my cousin's like, well, this is where I usually sit. And he's like, yeah, this is where the energy went. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like I call them portals, that portals come through right. and they bring the energy through. So it's like, it's important. And I've had lots of fun experiences with them in almost every place I've lived. Um, there's a whole way I work with them. That's a whole other thing. But where were we before I just got sidetracked again? Basic, <laughs> no, sorry, I interrupted. Basically, you said you had to move because of the energetic line. Well, because they told me and they guided me. Yeah. So it's like, I'm like, well, where should I go? And they said, we don't care. We just want you out. So I said, okay. So I took a map of the United States because I was too wussy of a girl to go international. I just was, it's like, I just, I probably, they probably had plans outside the, the United States, but so I folded into quarters and I used a pendulum and I doused and it's like, I ruled out, I got, I ruled out the Northern part of the U S and I got the Southern part. I got yeses. So then I did individual States. Yes, no, yes, no, da, 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 da. And I got down to nine States. I'm like, okay. And then it's like, I sat with it. I'm like, okay. And I asked different questions, like what would we, for my highest good, for my highest health, da, 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 da. And then I went through again and I got down to two states. So I got down to New Mexico and I got down to Florida and I knew one person in Florida and this might sound weird, but New Mexico doesn't have any Aldi's, which are a certain kind of grocery store in Florida did. So between knowing the one person and, and knowing that there was an Aldi's, <laughs> I chose Florida. <laughs> and so um not bad where did you move from though where where were you from pennsylvania oh pennsylvania to florida not bad not bad you move you made a good move (laughs) yeah but and that was like like i said i've been here it'll be seven years in july and spirits looking at relocating me now but right now with the they're saying with the the uncertainty and the turmoil the timeline has shifted a couple times so i'm just being open to seeing what flow brings and just being in trust because i'm in a safe Physically, I'm in a safe place, but there's, they're saying that there's another place that would be even more better, you know, outside, better for me. Outside U.S.? Um, I'm still a wussy girl, but I, I've had like little hits outside of the U.S., but I'm also looking at other places within the U.S., but we'll just see how the climate is. I'm not, I'm being open because they're saying, please be in flow and not, you know, be in a timeline that this has to happen in a certain amount of time. But it's like I've changed my rental agreement. So that instead of a year's lease, I have like a three month lease that I just renew every three months until because so I'll be ready when it's time. Yeah. Because who knows how it's going to show up. So I've, I'm, I'm, I've done that and um, we'll see what happens. But when I came down here, it's like, so, you know, because I knew it was right because it's like I found my, my rental the very next day. It was within my budget. My health improved. My as far as income goes, the company that I had worked full-time for, I ended up being able to work part-time so I could work 15 hours a week and still make more money than I was making when I was working Mm full-time. I got to explore, like do my art. See, this is one of my pieces. I brought it for you to see. Yep. And so I got to do my art. I, my health improved. I'm happier. And I got to explore more of myself and, and, you know, my spiritual growth and being able to just work with the energies of the planet. It wasn't, it wasn't so much I was doing a lot of sessions for other people. I was just really working on really becoming whole within me and working on the energies of the planet. And then I would have sessions here and there for individuals who you know followed me from Pennsylvania and would do remote sessions. And just you know, now it's like they're having me do more and more for groups and you know sessions and things like that because they said it's time to be out there to assist those who are awakening, that you can that I could you know empower them to empower themselves to heal. Right. What do you think about? Um, I think in the pre-interview we talked about changing DNA. So do you think um, if you spiritually grow that it's some in some way it changes your DNA structure? Okay, the way I look at it is you, ha- you have all the DNA that you have, okay? Mm-hmm. However, a lot of it is dormant or it's imprisoned, so it's, it's locked up. So you have all that coding within you. It's just a matter of um, setting it free to allow it to do what it's supposed to do. 
So right. in, in act, it does shift and change it because it awakens it. As opposed to you get new DNA. I don't look at it as new DNA. I look at it as it's actually freeing the DNA that you actually still have. And it shifts it that way. Do you think it's possible that, because um, like uh, I heard the, my friend did the comprehensive DNA test that didn't just say where he comes from and all that, the countries or he originates like, you know, DNA wise, but mm -hmm. also uh, some uh, concerning DNA stuff. And I thought, I thought it was scary because I don't know if I want to know if I have some kind of genetic stuff going on, but I, maybe that would, could, could be an experiment to have people take these comprehensive DNA tests and, and that show up. Uh, yeah. And then, and then years later, after they've done the work to see how it is. Yeah. There's, exactly. there's that part of it. The part of me is that because there's, there's stuff out there, there's nano, and other technology that comes in through chemtrails and other devices that attaches to your DNA and it alters your DNA that way. All right, let's talk about chemtrails. This is something that my friend, <laughs> <laughs> my friend okay. Edmundo is really big into and I always disagree with him. So I don't know what it is. I always thought it was, you know, planes going fast and leaving a trail of uh, air behind them because they're traveling so fast there. Um, you know, they're, they're just making a wave in the air, basically. Okay. Well, actually, there's What's they put know? chemicals into that exhaust, and then that can uh, that rains down on on us. But why? Because they want to control us and keep us under control. They don't want us fully awoken. But do, so, what what would these chemicals contain, though? Well, it could be nano, you know, nanotechnology, little, I mean, microscopic nano. It could be stuff that could affect the, the weather. Uh, I don't get into the details of what it is. I just know that I've actually had physical nano. I actually, I, you probably can't see it. There's a little scar there that um, came into my body. I was like, I was like, it was like something bothered me and it was like, and it was like, I had like a little red mole and I put this, it's like, and it, and it started bleeding. I'm like, what's that all about? And I have a salve that, that just takes the rat, the red mole off. And then it's like, my skin's fine. And it's like, blah, blah, blah. Well, this time it dug a deep hole because there was something artificial in my body that had to be pulled out. Now it's microscopic, but when I had that, it affected me emotionally. It was like, my emotions was, and I went into what I call um, suicide programming. So it was like, mm. whoa, where's this from? It's like, it's like, where's, it's like, I'm not like thinking about, you know, suicide. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden suicide is like thoughts, 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 thoughts. And I couldn't wow. get rid of it. And once I re realized what that was and energetically I could deactivate it, but it was still residual. And then once I got it out, it's like, you know, once I did that, it, my whole, demeanor changed my whole it was like whoa that was like programming and and i called that to me there's generic nano and then there's and this is just my opinion it's just my opinion from my experience okay there's generic that comes through the chemtrails through your food through vaccinations wherever you want it's not but then there's custom which depending on your vibration it like seeks you out Right. But that's uh, this so, energy leeches, that's astral uh, stuff that that can attack. Well, this is physical not. stuff. This is physical. This is stuff. Phys right. Um, I'm not, not I, I'm not saying there isn't etheric nano. There's etheric nano to also. And, and it, my belief is, but there's also the physical nano that comes from the chemtrails being out there and depending you can see it. And so after I released this, I had a friend and I'm like, I hadn't heard from her. And she goes, I just can't get out of bed. I keep crying. And I'm like, did you do a nano check? Because now that was my new thing. It's like, have you done a nano check? And she goes, oh, yeah, it's like right here. It was like in the crease of her arm. And there was like this little lump. And she's not, she uses, so she used tea tree and baking soda. And she put that on and it drew, drew it out. It was like the size of like a small little piece of rice. Wow. And, and as soon as we acknowledge what it was and deactivate it, her whole demeanor changed as well. That's crazy. It is crazy. So That's my it, world. It's like, 
So it basically you're saying it's like the opposite of Zulov. The 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 chemtrails are de depressive for the for the whole world. <laughs> they can I I believe they can be used for for many different reasons. So mm. You know, it's it's just like with anything. It's like you know, there's good. It's like you, you can, it's a vessel. How, what you put in the vessel is entirely up at who's 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 controlling. You know, the drop. But then, wouldn't that th this have to be like a really like evil, like mastermind behind all of this conspire? To well, there is the there is the, people say it's the conspiracy theater. You know, and right now we are at spiritual war, and we're in spiritual right. warfare, and I believe that. And but there and it's like but I'm not like I said I'm not pushing my beliefs. Um, you can believe what you want as far as that goes. This is my right. reality. It's what I've come to. But it's the darkness has always been there. It's always sure. been there. It's just that now there's more light, so there's light shining on it, so we see it. Hmm. So we have the illusion that there's more darkness, but right. it's always been there. It's just been hidden. There's more so shadows now. It's because yes. so like now it's coming to surface so it gives us the opportunity to, to to really take a look at it and really understand it and transmute it and the shadow side of us is to really embrace it and and integrate it with ourselves because there's no for me as you say it's good or bad then you're creating division you're creating division within yourself you're creating division within others so it's not about good or bad it's all about the wholeness the whole part of you so you you have a shadow side. So instead of denying it, how do you integrate it within the light? And how right. do you work with it within the light? And that can be challenging for some. But even when you say shadow, that implies a good and a bad. Well, that's right. just that that's just light and dark energy. Right. It's just it just doesn't mean it. you you have the you have the the belief that dark is bad and light is good. Yeah. But it's still all part of us, whether it's if you have that or not. So to me, it's just it's light and it's dark. It's not good or bad. Um, it's just part of who we are. So it's about how do we get that to work together? Mm -hmm. So we're whole, as opposed to us judging and causing um, division. How do we work together with it? Right. right now, it's like, you know, and there is that darkness. So it's like in the light and the dark, and it is a spiritual warfare. But there's things that are happening to get people to awaken, to be able to see that. So it all plays a part. And it's and so you can go down many rabbit holes with this. Right. But that makes sense because um, if everything's dark, then there's no shadows. But when there's the light is brighter, there's shadows. And you can see those mm -hmm. shadows clearly because they're different from the light. And the shadow is clearly Correct. there. Wow, that's interesting. Um, yeah, right. so it gives you the opportunity to work with them. Right. Because you I, didn't see them before because it was just the darkness, you know, and it's and you thought you were in freedom. You know, you had that illusion of freedom because that's what they wanted you to believe. But now it's like, whoa, look at this. There's more light. So it's like we can see the shadows. We can see it. And, you know, work with it. Um, uh, my uh, my teacher, David Hawkins, uh, once said that uh, evolution leads to revolution. Because once you, mm, once the world evolves, a, yeah. then it starts to, some elements start to try to make a revolution because they're like, oh, there's so much injustice, there's this and that. But uh, anyway, um, uh, let's talk about this timeline of um, the vaccines, let's say. <laughs> oh, uh, that's what gets me in trouble. Um, that's, okay, well, it might get me in trouble as well, but what the heck, so. Well, I just, for, for me, it's a personal choice. Everybody has their choice. Yeah. I choose not to. And I choose not to because I believe there is the nanos in there. And I believe that the, it's not fully tested and it's not even labeled a vaccine, really labeled a vaccine. And they really, and they're the truth of what it, of how it is affecting people it, through mass media, through, you know, the, it's about controlling for right. us to have the narrative. So it's like, we're just gonna have the narrative of what's being shown to us. And the fact that they're suppressing and censoring anything that doesn't agree with their narrative. Yeah. Um, I have that, I'm, you know, I, I have feelings about that as far as that goes, but for me to tell someone that you're programmed, you know, and you're not seeing the truth, 
isn't going to do any good. They've got to see it for themselves because their truth is their truth. And they're thinking, I'm just as nuts as I think, you know, I think that they're blind. You know, they think I'm crazy. I'm a conspiracy theorist because I see things differently than they do. But I just want to hold space and light for them because I see that I just want them to be able to see th that different reality, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to be free and to be able to be whole. But I come from love. But you can really, when somebody comes from fear and hate and like, you know, that is like, yeah. that to me is like really a scary place because that's just causing, they're winning then because they're causing more division between us when that kind of energy is coming through an individual or groups of individuals. Yeah, I know a lot of um, anti-vaccine people and I would, I, I'm not favorable to anti myself. Like I'm not so... I'm not so for vaccines, I should say, because, um, yeah, like you said, they, they haven't really been tested. Like the, um, the, the companies are not really liable to anything they right. do. So well, like, yeah. And that's because, yeah. And the political, it's like they own the, po the politics of it. As far as that goes, they've signed laws so they don't be liable. So the politics right. have just pushed so, that through. So what do we have? It's like, what do we have? We have no recourse. They have no, they have no accountability. Right. So there's no incentive to re actually really provide Do the right really thing. much good. And also the third reason is 99, more than 99% of people aren't affected much at all. I mean, okay, they don't die. So I don't think I'll, I'll be one of those people that, you know, so I, I don't think this is a, this is a huge deal. And also I believe that, you know, when, when I, when I die, I die in God's time. It's not going to be the virus. Right. It's going to be whatever, you know? So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's well, when it's our time. And, and that's the whole thing is like, whoever's choosing that. And yeah. if by chance it, it gives them a physical challenge or whatever, it's like, is that part of, is that part of their soul plan? And it just ask, ask questions. It's not that I know the answers because we come here to experience and we come here to help others learn lessons. Right. So if we if we are one that takes the vaccine and we have ill effects or we die from it was that just all part of our soul plan was that our choice to come here to do that so that we can allow others to see it so that it can awaken others you can go down so many different scenarios as far as you know the reality of it like every every person every being whether they're coming with the energies of the dark or what you consider bad or light they're still they still have a purpose here because it's like, it's like, is it to awaken others? Is that we've got to show this darkness so that we can awaken others so we can raise our consciousness. Mm. There's just, there's different ways to look at it. And that's why I think everybody has their, we're all connected. So however we're all connected we, with our job or our responsibility as ones who have already raised our vibration is to continue to raise our vibration to empower others to raise their vibration so we can get to that tipping point because the mm. pendulum's going to swing you know it's going to swing back yeah you know, because right now we're just like we're in that spiritual warfare yeah i, I have uh, I, i'm very concerned about i, I spoke about this and on some of the episodes i'm very concerned about america because uh it seems like a lot of the negative forces are um and, and not just negative sor sources because I'm, I disagree with them, but because they're aligned with stuff, with ideology that's not conducive to anything good um, and are actually censoring people that disagree with them and, and want to um, want to censor uh, like almost half the country that disagrees with them. Like it's, right, or, or, or label them terrorists. Yeah, like yeah. is this... Okay, so what's uh, you talked about timelines? So what does that exactly mean? Timelines. <laughs> it's <laughs> in what in what? <laughs> there's just different. I think there's just different parallel timelines where we can access. There's different dimensions as far as that goes. So you want to, you know, and we have our personal timelines, and and we can really go down the rabbit hole with this. So like. Like our soul has 12 aspects, 11 of them, 11 others are incarnated in different timelines or different dimensions, but it whoa, still has the same, whoa, 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 so whoa, 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 whoa. it still has time. the same birth start <laughs> and the death start. So we're existing in those different planes and we're experiencing different things. So 
is there a timeline out there where the balance, the spiritual war is like more in balance to the light or is it more in balance to the dark? You can go down so many different levels that it can hurt your head. So I just, when I set the intention, I wanna access the timeline of my soul that is experiencing that divine light, divine love frequency and where it is at its highest level. So that's the, that's where I want to tie my timeline into. Mm -hmm. And then I ask, you know, and then it's about that by raising my vibration and getting in that timeline in this existence, it's also affecting the actual planetary timeline as well, because the more we do that, it raises the vibration of all. I know so, it's like, whoa, it's like <laughs> my head's starting to hurt. I, right. I didn't know you were going to take me down all these really interesting roads or rabbit holes. There we go. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've heard this before. I think the 12 souls, but I just don't understand it. Let's say, let's say if one of the souls gets enlightened, does that mean that the, the other 11 souls are still stuck somehow? Or now, I don't, I, I just want, there's just the aspects and we're all, and it's about what we came, in my opinion, in my belief, we came here to learn and we came here to learn different experiences. So there's, there's those 12 aspects of soul. And then there's the oversoul, which is like 144 pieces, da, 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 blah. That's, let's not even go there. Let's just stay with the aspects of our, our current soul. And my belief is like, we're all experiencing all these different things. So it may be, like in one lifetime, I chose a different path. It's like, I chose not to have a child or I chose to not work on myself. Then, then that's different. You know, that's, a, I'm having a different experience there. Right. So, but that information is still available to me of how I did that. But I, because I have this process where we merge with the, the 12 aspects of soul so that we get all that information. It doesn't mean we pick up the bad habits or we pick up, you know, the things, or we have to, you know, learn something from that. It just gives us the information of how we accomplished what we did in those timelines. So right. it's, it says, so if it comes across, it's like, whoa, where's that from? Oh, I can utilize that information because I'm connected to my soul as a whole. Is that we supposed to, to um like parallel universes or like it could, you world? could call it, you could you could you might want to if it if your monkey mind needs to relate it that way you could look at it that way it's like to me there's different dimensions so they could be parallel universes because you exist in parallel universes there's that aspect of soul or it's just different timelines however you know however you can like do it because who knows we as these 3D humans need to create labels for our mind to understand what's happening as opposed to just the concept of it. So it's like, we have to like understand it on a mental level as opposed mm -hmm. to a heart level, you know, and that's our programming. But I really truly just try to get out of that monkey mind syndrome of like trying to explain what's this and you got all this and you're doing all this as opposed to just, I'm in my heart, I'm fully connected. It's like, I'm getting the information all right, let's go with it. As opposed to, oh my gosh, it's like, what was aspect one doing and aspect four doing <laughs> and aspect five doing? Oh, there's, I got to know all those details. That's it's like, what no. I would be asking. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that monkey mind. That doesn't mean you can't work with those aspects separately. Cause I know, you know, I have a, a friend who is, has a health issue. So is that health issue, is that taking place in those other aspects of soul? So if she works with the other aspects and she heals it at the aspect level, does that assist her in healing it on this level? It's like, you can only go by your own experience of the results to say that what is real and what is not real, right. because none of it's, you know, it's none of it. We're just here in this 3d body on this planet for the experience to be able to be in this 3d world. You know, and we're also, some of us are here more so to actually raise the vibration for this tipping point to really be able to raise the vibration of the planet. We all have different, you know, responsibilities or missions or 
you know, paths or whatever you want to call it. But the main thing is to raise our own vibration, to look within ourselves, to be whole, so that we can, so that people around us are being able, just being in our energy is raising their vibration as well. Hmm. I've heard this uh, 12 stoles before. Is this coming from um, uh, an author or an author's? Or is this um, um, you, you stuff that you um, got from your guides? For my teens and my guides, it's like I, I just sit with it. Um, so what they'll do is they'll show me something. Like they'll say, okay, you have these aspects of soul. And I'm like, oh, what's that all about? And I'm like, well, show me some breadcrumbs as far as that goes. So they'll give me these things. And then it's like, they'll, then I'll send, oh, so I'll like, oh, well, here's this. And it's like, I find this. And then it's like, oh, I find that. It's like, that doesn't feel light to me. So I take all that information of whatever research of them showing me where to go, like whether it's a book or whether it's just like an article here. And it's like, oh, and that opens something else up inside me. And then all of a sudden I have an aha moment. Yeah. And from there, that's where we go. Does that mean I haven't taken courses or, you know, studied different modalities that have given me information and awoken different gifts with inside me? Of course I have. But when it comes to things like now where I am in my life, it's like, I just get this information. Like I'm doing a, a program that starts next week. And one of it, it's, it's just a quantum healing and clearing and one of it is we're clearing the crystal implants within you. And I had this, I worked with this and did this with, with another, this process with someone else probably 20 years ago. Right. There, and it came up and it said, you need to facilitate this for others. And I've been facilitating it on a one-on-one -on -one because I see how the, it is. And I'm like, okay. So it's like, all right, I can do that. It's like, I get that. I know what that's all about. And then they say, oh, and by the way, we also want you to clear the J seals the Jehovah seals. I'm like, what is, what is that? that all about? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is that all about? It's like, I had no idea. And so, you know, I did research on it and I'm like, okay. And it's to do with the Anuki, Anuk, and I don't even know how to pronounce it, where they put these seals within the earth. And because of the earth, we also have them as humans. I'm like, okay. And there's all these different levels. And I'm like, okay, so what's that all about? And they said, well, we just want you to do this first part and we want you to do it with working with the aspects of soul, all the aspects of soul as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that, so what I see is that we'll be releasing there on the left side of your body. There's, there's seven of them and they, you know, they're supposed to keep you from really raising your consciousness and your level. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, okay, what's this about? So I worked with another person. I worked with clearing my own. And I worked with this other person so that I could get her experience. And I didn't work with the aspects of soul with her. I just worked with going through the process. And she could actually feel it felt like wax melting. She goes, da, 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 da. And her whole, her health, her lungs cleared. And she could breathe for the first time in a long time after we did this process. So mm. she had a really good, you know, there was other things that happened too when we did this. But that was like the main thing. And so she had a really good experience with it. And they said, see, this is what needs to be done. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to facilitate that. You know, it's like, I'm doing it. I, I the class is just about, Phil. I have one more opening because I limited it to 12 people. And then there was two other things they're having me doing too, that, you know, I've done in the past, but that first, that, that one was like, I never even heard of that. And then it's like, so I did research. Yes, this feels real. What is this? And it's like, and the whole thing is, is like, you could go to the fact that it's like, cause this is all the matrix. So is it all part of the game? But we're in the game. Cause I heard somebody say, oh, there's no such thing as chakras. They're like, da, 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 da. Right. And it's like, but we're in our 3D bodies and we still have to deal with those energy centers. So it's, we're in the game. And until we're completely in 5D at that higher level of consciousness, we still have to learn how to survive in the game to get us to that level. So it's, right. it's such a, it's, it can go so many different directions as far as your belief systems and, and the reality of it. And who knows really what's real, you know, because it's like, none of us really know it, regardless. It's like, we can be channeling, we get information, but until we're actually there, 
how do we really know what it is? I don't yeah. claim to know. I just know from my experience what my team tells me and shows me of how I'm supposed to assist others, whether that's the way somebody else would do it. It doesn't matter to me. It's like if somebody does it different, it doesn't matter to me because to me, we're all here for a purpose. And those that are supposed to, I'm supposed to work with will find me. Those that are supposed to work with somebody else will find them. And there's no yeah. right or wrong. There seems to be a lot of difference of opinion though, I, I, even on spiritual matters or what's, what is true, what, what, uh, what concepts are true, what are false. Uh, mm -hmm. But there seems to be one thing that uh, a lot of religions even and the spiritual circles have in common is that there's a, it's good to progress towards love, towards light, you know, or mm -hmm. towards enlightenment, uh, whichever tradition you take, uh, towards yeah, salvation. How you get there? Who, who really cares how you get there? That's that monkey mind thinking you got to do it by these certain steps. They're the programs that says you got to do these steps. Or you're not going to make it. It's like that's we've man's created that. Those were you, rules. Were you raised Christian, by the way? I was I went to church. I was taken to church as you know, as far as that goes. But in my late teens, I actually did a study on the different religions. And, you know, it's like it's like, well, this is like this. And then oh, this is man made. This is all about control. So I went through that whole thing. And if you ask me any questions about it now, it's like, that was, that was a long, long time ago. Long so time don't ago, be, right. don't be asking me specific questions. <laughs> and, but it's like, I just realized that, you know, at like 16, 17 years old, I realized that it was just man-made and it was just to create that reality for us. Does that mean that none of that ever happened? No, but it's very indoctrined, you know, with man-made because man still wrote the books you know, as far as that goes, right, right, how they interpret it was man interpreted. So and if they're channeling it from a higher level, awesome. But how do you know what's really channeling? You know, it's like, yeah, it's like, it, you, there's just so many questions, as far as that goes, you know, yeah, the realities, I have some I have some issues with the Bible myself, and some of them, because they were uh, a lot of them were God inspired, sure, but the, but they uh, at the, they call it the Council of Nicaea. They selected the books uh, which are going to be in the Bible, and they they probably left some good ones out, and some of them they shouldn't be in. They they put in anyway. That's my own uh, personal thing with it. Yeah, because it's about it. Really, is about keeping us in the matrix as far as that goes, and keeping us in control, but letting us think we have freedom. So fallibility of man i think they, they think they're doing good mm -hmm. i think there's a there's a socrates quote uh, to paraphrase that uh, every man is doing what he thinks is good but he yep. doesn't know what the real good is and that's absolutely because and that's the same way with me i just have to trust yeah. when i'm guided to do something it's like i have to use discernment it's like okay is this really what i'm supposed to be doing you know checking mm -hmm. in and it's like okay is my ego involved because it's like sometimes it's like i had a group not this current group that I'm working with, but the group before they had, I, the program that I run is there's, there's structure. So we work on your spiritual infrastructure, but then it's also organic. So based on who's in the group, spirit will say, well, we want to do this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, well, spirit had me do this, this high vibrational thing that I, I was like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? I would never do that with people. It's like, that's just like, would put them like over the edge and they're like the group is ready for it and they were all high vibrational beings and i'm like okay the group is ready for it i'm still questioning it i'm still doubting it and i just kept getting the same information it's like okay just do it and so i honored it and i did it and it was amazing and they all had these really great results because mm. it just took them to the next level if i would have just done that with my ego and said oh i'm going to do this for everybody I would have blown people's root chakras out. I would have blown out their foundations because they weren't at that level. They weren't ready for that. Hmm. You know, so interesting. So it's just, it's like you have to get out of what you think is right and wrong, really have that connection, which because I really work on myself over the years and continue to work on myself, my channel is really clear with source. And when I connect to other people's source, my stuff isn't there to get in the way or to convolute it so the information i get is pretty pure 
And I learned to honor that. And um, if something doesn't feel right, it's like, I get, it's like, I get it right. It's like right in here, my heart and my stomach, like, oh, that's not right. That's, that's heavy. It's like, well, we're just going to like clear that, you know, and, and move forward with the lighter stuff because I just, like I said, it's like my beliefs and my truth is mine, but I never want to force my beliefs or my truths onto someone else. Yeah. I believe I have, I have a friend who's a devout Catholic and she's a, she's, she, you know, she's a high vibrational being and she might necessarily believe, you know, everything, but that's, that's where she finds her light. And the, and the, you know, she has found a church that gives her that. And it's like, actually I have a couple of people that, you know, are, that are from that and their and their vibration is high and they have their belief, but that's how they got there. So if, so you don't right. want to throw the baby out with the bathwater because it takes, sometimes it takes that to get people to really, to evolve. Uh, yeah, I think um, in general, um, maybe it's blasphemous in this day and age to say, but I think religion has had a tremendous positive influence um, on the world. Um, even though I might disagree with some Catholic things, I, I grew up Catholic and um, actually the best Catholic I've ever met was this guy in France who was a, uh, a lawyer. And in France, for some reason, takes two years to convert. So this guy wasn't even a Catholic officially, but he was... Imagine this, he was working 12 hour shifts as a lawyer. And then after he went, he went out where the prostitutes are and where the homeless people were. And he was giving out bread and talking, trying to talk with prostitutes out of uh, their line of work into getting, getting some more respectable work so, <laughs> and stuff like that. And he was so devout that something had, uh, cause you know, how to explain this you know how some people say prayers but they just say, just saying it and some people say it with a devotion so i think when people say prayers with a devotion something changes and something in him right changed. it's that it's that yeah it's yeah. within you it's like you do you do you do it just because you have to right or do you do, do, you do it because you, you're you, giving your heart to it right you know, a devotion far, like true devotion <laughs> worship and something changed in him uh, and uh uh and something changed, like physically, something changed in his brain. He said he's a lawyer, so he for he said for three months he was useless. He says, uh, you know, I would come to work, I was useless, I, I couldn't do anything. <laughs> and 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 not only that, people noticed it, and he developed this very um, infectious laugh. And uh, yeah, it's it just um, it's just amazing what he can um, even if you take one path a religious path i am a christian by the way but i do have some obviously diversion path beliefs but um i think any path you take earnestly if it's a true path uh the one that leads to god not not below then right. it's and good. i believe god and i believe god is in all of us and i use god interchangeably with the universe that god and the universe are one yeah that's my belief you know so you know and and it's just because and we all look at things differently, but if, you know, but I don't judge like other people's choices or other people's paths because you don't know their path and you don't know their ripples that they're creating as far as that goes, right. you know, and for me, to, it's like, it's not my place to, to decide you should be doing this or you shouldn't be doing that. And it's like, you know, it's like, I, you know, I don't even have words because it's like, that's just not who I am. You know, but I, it's like, but please, I'm asking others not to judge me because I don't judge them, but still, you know, there's judgment everywhere. So it's like, I'm yeah. sure no matter, it's like, I go by the motto, it's none of my business, what people think of me, because when I, when you worry about that or worry about people judging you, then you're just giving your power to them. Yeah, that's right. Especially, you know, being, um, uh being in the public eye in a way that we're doing this you have to kind of uh, not care as much about what other people think um so you said before that you do uh you, you do work with people so was it uh, what kind of energetic work was that that you did with the group that you mentioned be, mentioned before the, the group the, like, like yeah the high energy stuff that you were mentioning just oh that was ago. that was something to do with their high level 
from what I can remember, because that was like probably six months ago or five months ago. It was um, something to do with power pyramids and the upper um, dimensional chakras, like the, the, the higher dimensional chakras, as far as that goes, as far as that's all I you know remember. I have my notes right. as far as it goes, but. Um, so is that what you do? You do workshops and you do um, healings one-on-one uh, -on -one with people? Yeah, I, facil I facilitate healings. I have group work. I have, like I, like I said, I'm doing this um, quantum clearing and healing uh, module, which is like four different sessions. And we're only working with like 12 people. So that's a group. And that's, you know, for four, four, four consecutive Saturdays. And then the group transformation program is something that I run. It's a five-week program. And I run it like every eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's about building your spiritual infrastructure. So what we do is we merge with the three levels of your higher self. We activate your Merkaba light bodies. Um, mm -hmm. We merge with the, your 12 aspects of soul, plus a lot of other things that help you. You know, we do, we negate a lot of belief systems. Um, so there's a lot of things in there that if you're looking, you know, looking for something like that, it's a good starting place. And it's like, and each group's different. It's like, the, I mean, this group that I'm working with now, we have one more week and it's a full house. I have eight people because that's my max. And I've got four people that have taken it before and four people that are new at it, but we're still finding a balance of what fits for everybody. And so I'm always amazed at, you know, by listening to the source, to you know, spirit of how they just orchestrate everything so perfectly. Mm. And, you know, I do other, I do others. I mean, I do one-on-ones and I also do like galactic card readings, but it's basically a healing within the reading because I facilitate um, whatever shows up in the reading of what needs to be the energy moved. So it, it turns into that. So I call it, it's like, it's like a session in disguise. I call it because people like to have the reading, like they have the cards, but they don't really, when they, and they like, oh, I'll take a reading, but I don't want to do a healing. <laughs> it's like, what, no, what we don't want to look at that stuff. We'd rather have the reading. What kind of and, cards um, are they? They're the galactic heritage um, cards. It's a, okay. it's a, I do, it's a higher guidance reading or a karmic um, challenge reading. And so I have a basic and then I have like an in-depth, the basic takes about 30 minutes, the in-depth is 60 minute. And like with a 30 minute, we might look at one or two of the issues as far as and in like deeper, like do a, a facilitate a healing with that. And with the, the in-depth, we actually probably look at all four because there's four cards that get pulled and whatever that, that comes up that's guided to work with. So I work with it that. So they get like those sessions within the reading yeah. as well. Cool. And then whatever... Um whatever is supposed to show up shows up and it's like whatever I'm guided it's like I you know it's like like I have a YouTube channel out there and spirit will say like I just act, released it like two weeks ago it's a rainbow body activation and it was channeled to me over six months ago and spirit kept saying nope you can't release it yet can't release it yet they're not ready they're not ready and I'm like okay and then I finally got the go ahead and I'm like okay here it goes and put it out there so it's like there was that part of me that just wanted to get it out because it was channeled. But the other part, that, because it was channeled for me to actually work with myself and da, 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 da. And then, mm -hmm. so, so I just go with things like that. There's also the other one that I love that's out there is it's a called updating your, your human body computer. Cause I look at us like we're a computer, our body's a computer. And that, I love that video. That's one of my favorite ones too, because that upgrades your whole system. So you can hold more light, upgrade your, your motherboard and everything. And it just ex gives you a complete expansion. So I got excited about that because they channeled that for me too, but that's been out there probably on the channel for a year ago. And it's still, it like has over 2000 hits and it's like, you know, and that's like, it's still, it still gets there. You know what I mean? But there's other yeah. processes out there that I put that I use for my own healing journey, like cutting cords, ancestral healing, like on addiction. Um, inner child work, you know, self-love. So anything that I've worked on with myself, they've guided me to just put a short video out there that can assist others with the same, the things, mm. some of the things that I've done. So it empowers you. And then I also channel um, 
the high benevolent beings I call my 85 team, which is a, they channel galactic language, star language, light language, whatever you want to call it. And that's vibrational energy that comes through. And that's like a living entity when that comes through. So when you listen to that, depending on what your vibration or your frequency is, it'll affect you differently than it will someone else. Right. And you may listen to it this week and then six months from now, listen to it again, and it'll have a completely different effect on you. And so there's, there's that's out there as well. And I just go with it, whatever the spirit guides me. Cause when they wanted me to create a YouTube channel, it's like, I, no, no, no. I don't want to do that. You it's got like, that suggested. But, wow. That's, that's crazy. You know, and then, and I had the radio show too. When the spirit had me, you know, start the radio show, it's like, they, you know, it was like, there was a lot of fear there because I've always worked under the radar. You know, it's like, I always considered covert mission, working with the energies of the earth, working with the planet. It's yeah. like, don't, don't be out there in front of the public. And then, you know, so it's like the radio show. We, I started with the energetic toy box and then that's evolved. And I have, it's, it's, got, it's a call to heal. And we're like, currently we're taking a little bit of a break where hopefully we'll be out back in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. That's where we had three callers call in and my co-host and I, Carolee Schloth, we facilitate energy healing for three of our callers because we read the energy. And so that's our way of giving back because it's, it's something that's free that anybody can call in and same way with the YouTube channel. It's a way of giving back because it's, it's all free. And, you know, so I, I don't, it's, you know, it's like, I don't, it's hard to explain, but it's like, to me, it's like when spirit guides me to do things like that, I do it now. Like they said about doing interviews. And I've just started doing interviews probably in the last three or four months. Mm -hmm. And I just did, I drug my feet, but it's like, it's time for you to get out there and people need to see you. And I'm like, really? I don't really want to. And they just kept nagging me. And it's so, so now it's like, so when opportunities come, I just follow the guide. And it's like, if I'm supposed to, it happens. And if not, it's like, I, I don't do it, but it's like, I've seen magic happen and um, I'm just grateful like for the opportunity to talk with you because we talked about things that oh, I'm sure I'm going to have to say it's none of my business what people are thinking of me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, like, <laughs> that's always the but, case, especially political but, stuff. People are yeah, always because I because I, I you know I have my own and I it's to me it's like it's it shouldn't be an issue it should be a non-issue what my views are because right. I'm not here to like push my views, but, and they're personal. And I think everybody has the right to have their personal views and to not be in fear of, of having them. Well, you know, it's, it's the age it is today. If, if yeah, my doctor, I know. I'm a supporter, it's not going to be my doctor anymore. People think like that, you know, so it's, Hey, it is what it is. Um, so let, let's end on a, uh, I was going to ask so this last question about, um, so Alex Bailey, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her work. She, and her work, she uh, often mentions the year 2025 as a year where the energy of glamour and something else as well is going to change um, for the better, presumably. So have you uh, had any of that guidance yourself? Okay. So my opinion, my belief is mm. we really need to stop setting dates, dates <laughs> because we get focused on the dates as, oh, this is going to save us. The date's going to save us. Everything's going to change on the date. And it's a distraction. Yes, I believe things are changing for the better. I believe that it's happening to put a date on it. To, con to confine it to a date is just, um, it's just something I don't agree with because just like, oh, everything was gonna change December 21st. And it's like, oh, and people woke up and it's like, they were so disappointed. Yeah. It's a process, it's not an event. It's a process. This process of enlightenment may take thousands of years. Okay? Sure. I'm amazed that I'm seeing what I'm seeing now in my current lifetime, because it's like, I've like, in my twenties and thirties, it's like, I already saw it happening. Well, when's it going to happen? And I was like, Oh, it's going to happen. This I'm like, what is this? It never, you know, so you, 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 you get distracted by the date. So it's like, I'm past the date stuff. It's like, to me, it's like, there is no time. 
or space. I'm just gonna be in this moment of now. I'm gonna raise my vibration, keep my channel clear, empower others to empower themselves, continue with my ripples of that vibration, and I'm just gonna trust it. I can't see all the steps. I'm just gonna be in divine trust mm -hmm. and flow. And that's, that's my responsibility. And if people want to follow the dates, that's their choice. But for me, I'm not a date. I don't, I don't go with dates. All right. Well, that's, that's a good place to end. <laughs> I, <laughs> Before you take me down another rabbit hole yeah, and be in more trouble. <laughs> I'll, I'll put all the links in the description so people can find you. And um, I want to thank you very much for being on the podcast. Julia Stubbe. Did yes. I get it right? Yeah, there we go. Yes and uh yeah thank you and uh thank you everybody for listening and watching and thank you again for having me this was a lot of it was quite interesting and it was also highly entertaining and a lot of fun thank you thank you <laughs>